Hey folks, welcome to Wolpins Gaming 10. Today we're unboxing the game Crown of Inmara. This is a game designed by Benjamin Schwer and published by Pegasus Spiel. It is a Euro style game, so I'm expecting Euro style components and graphics and whatnot. Now that's not a knock against the game itself, but it's just to let you know uh, the kind of components we might expect in this one. And it definitely has a standard Euro fascia up front, as it were. We get to see the crown, some birds sort of like hopping on it, a castle slash down up in the background. So generally fairly pleasing uh, artwork, as it were. Uh, it is designed for uh, players ages 12 and above, expected to be played in roughly 45 to 75 minutes, and uh, played between one to four players. So that's Crown of Amara. Let's quickly flip it over and see what we have on the other side. And we get a quick overview of uh, what we can expect inside the box uh, itself. Looks like there's a couple of uh, smallish boards, perhaps. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of cards, some sort of a tableau that you're working with, uh, and player pieces and wooden components in general. So uh, what does it say? Win the crown and succeed the king of Imara. So it looks like you're looking to succeed uh, a king, as it were. Uh, but it's an Euro game, so theme may or may not have a lot to do with the actual gameplay mechanics. So we'll hold judgment on that for now. But let's crack into it and see what we have inside the box. All right, so this goes off. And uh, of course, we've already seen the front of the box, but with the shrink rack off, the color does pop a little bit more. So that's always good. Let's see what's inside. Standard thickness, standard uh, inside of the lid. Uh, the first thing, of course, we're greeted with is a rule book, and it looks like we have a bunch of cardboard to get through. So we'll have a look at that in a minute. Let's start with uh, this first, as it were. So we have the int introduction, a uh, bunch of components. Um, obviously, this being a Euro game, there's gonna be a bunch of uh, wooden bits. Uh, there's definitely gonna be quite a few cards as well by the look of things, and a bunch of cardboard. So that's that, and uh, this gives us an overview of this. I assume this is the setup, even though it doesn't say setup up top. Uh, it does look like you're uh, setting up the game as it were. And it uh, gives you a quick overview of everything that goes on the, in the play area as well, which is generally quite helpful. It's all numbered and everything with the explanations next to the corresponding numbers. So hopefully it helps you set it up pretty easily. Next up, we have the overview, close of the game what a turn structure could look like. So you have card actions, movement actions, uh, down location actions, bonus actions, and then end of the game. Uh, and then it moves on to explanation of the cards and the tokens. So that's always a, a good thing where you don't have to, hopefully the symbology is easy enough, but uh, if you are sort of like uh, uh, caught in between two minds as to what a particular card might mean or might sort of like uh, be actioned upon you can always refer to this and this uh, walks you through it and uh, we did say that this was playable by one to four players so there's a solo mode in here as well uh, and it looks like there's a bit of a campaign structure that's recommended not a traditional campaign i assume but just something you can uh, play i guess succeeding games with as it were uh, and it does tell you so play your first game Start on 40, if you win, decrease uh, starting position by five. If you lose, bump it up by two. So it's not a campaign campaign, uh, but just something where you can challenge yourself to uh, beat a higher score. There is a beat higher score mode as well, so there you go. Uh, that's there, so rules specific to the solo mode. Uh, score sheet for the solo mode at the very back. Uh, you can either keep your scores here or you can keep it separately, uh, whichever you prefer. There's a few variants uh, you can play with. And then, of course, we have the end game credits. Now, generally speaking, uh, I'm pretty happy with uh, how it looks. Uh, not very visual heavy, but it looks like, again, it's a Euro game, so hopefully uh, the actions are logical and sort of like, you know, easy to get into, uh, as it were. And the rules itself, it's, it's not a lot of pages, right? Like, once you're done with the setup, overview, and then the rule structure is just basically one, two, three, four pages, as it were. So... Hopefully something I should be able to get to the table pretty soon. So that's that. Uh, next up, cardboard. All right, let's see what we have in here. Now these are obviously gonna be things we're gonna be punching out. So let's see how that works. And it's punching out well enough. So it looks like there might be multiple of these uh, that you're punching out and uh, 
they might be used to combine a larger play area of sorts no, not like that maybe like this yeah, i think like this so here you can see sort of like where these uh fit in uh one with the other yeah so these are going to form the main play area assume these i guess are resources based on the fact that they look uh like bread they better be bread otherwise it's just uh it'd be very confusing uh and then some more cardboard and what i assume is the money in the game so that's that uh again we have seen what this looks like we've seen what this looks like uh similar thing but this board is of a different color so i assume it combines with these other guys to form a different board uh oh and these are double-sided i we did not look at this so this is these are double-sided so hopefully that gives you a lot of options and combinations uh in terms of how you play the game which is always a good thing uh next up we have a ring of sorts i don't know what happens what works with that oh i and that there's actually something here that i may have missed it looks like that this punches through in the center so it looks well more like a ring i guess not that you can put your finger through it it's uh yeah that's not gonna happen but uh everything is punching out well so far uh no issues from a component standpoint there are of course these additional uh pieces that we did not have a look at uh, but without really knowing the rules, it's hard to say what these do. Uh, so let's see what else we have as we go through it. More punch board. More punch board. These look a little different. Uh, so you have this by the side. Now, I don't know if this is a play board or not, uh, but that's there. And there's four of these by the look of things. So maybe it's part of the game area. Maybe it's part of the play board. I'm not sure. Uh, and then there's uh, more of these. Everything, again, is punching out quite well this might be a start player token of sorts i think and yeah and it looks like we might have uh, other things that go uh, in here as well to make it stand uh, which i think i found that looks like a uh, suitably horsey thing doesn't it i think it does there you go so there's going to be another one that goes there we're not gonna we're not gonna sort that out but uh, this is the other piece if you were curious about it uh, more punch board and then uh, again don't know what this does but that's there now uh, just generally speaking quality of the cardboard is good uh, it is thick without necessarily being what you might call chunky uh, but it's still good I think this is gonna withstand multiple playthroughs quite easily uh, no issues uh, no, uh, on that the artwork on the board is standard euro uh, as I assume these are going to be pretty functional in terms of looking at the icons and uh, figuring out what you need to do and what the benefits might be, but not a lot of visual flair, as it were. Again, not a knock against the game. It's just uh, uh, calling it out uh, in terms of what I can see there. Uh, next up, it looks like more cardboard, but this is some sort of a scoring crack. This is, uh, well, this is just one board for this one. Uh, might be some sort of a market row, perhaps? not sure but uh, there is one of these and then you have two of these which i assume will combine to form some sort of a uh, score track or some sort of uh, well a track at the very least uh, i'm assuming it's gonna keep track of the score but it could be anything else could be money could be fame could be anything and there you go uh and looks like it fits well enough and of course uh, you will have to take it off. Uh, whoa. It is stuck hard. Nope, it's not. All right, never mind. Uh, but you will, of course, have to take it off uh, if you want to put it back in the box. Uh, next up, a bunch of cards. We'll put this aside for a minute, and we'll just have a look at the wooden components before we go any further. So let's see what we have in here. These are standard meeples. And what looked like... Uh, huts i guess or houses or whatnot so there's uh, one of each color in the back so there's eight pieces in here overall uh larger dudes two in each color i think yeah uh so larger guys or cows uh, as it were 
in here again it's it's big it's chunky it's nice it's uh oh actually uh you have guys and gals so that's good you have a uh, representation of both whatever the rules might say it's uh always good to see fair representation in games these days uh next up we have what i assume are resources i'm gonna make a wild guess and say this is stone or brick or well stone i think this might be wheat perhaps yep so you have a pack full of those two uh, da -da -da -da. this is of course wood that's an easy one i don't know what that is is that water maybe not sure but it is blue and it is wooden uh, and then of course the bag is uh, filled with a bunch of those in here as well so that's that and then the last bag with the uh, wooden bits Let's see what's happening in here. Uh, smaller meeples. Uh, so a bunch of meeples of different sizes. I don't know what they do in the game itself, but uh, obviously it's easy to distinguish them. So that's always a good thing. And you have these in the different play colors as well. I think once I'm sort of like done sorting this out, I might be uh, putting them based on play colors in separate bags instead of by sizes. It's just easier to pull them out when you're playing the games, right? As it were. And then of course the last bit is uh, the god stack. So let's get cracking into this and see what sort of lovely artwork we may or may not have in these. All right, so lots of gods. That's just the first thing that I realized as soon as I uh, took these out of the bag. Uh, the backs are different, so there are obviously different type of gods in here, uh, but these are all a smaller. These are not standard size gods. These are mini European or mini American, uh, one of the two, I think. Uh, now these are the resource cards, I assume. Uh, they just have images of uh, resources and actions, as it were, uh, and they have different colored backs. So I don't know if this is player specific or uh, actually it might be. So you have blue, green, yellow, uh, red. Yeah, so these might be player specific cards, I think. Uh, but you have uh, cards that give you different resources or actions or some such thing. Uh, so that's there. So let's see where we ended. So this is uh, the cards we just had a look at. And next up, these cards have a different pack. And uh, yeah, definitely very standard European, uh, sorry, uh, very standard Euro style uh, cards as it were. So these, I assume, do some sort of an action uh, or give you some sort of a benefit, but these do not seem to be player specific. Uh, Artwork is okay. It's uh, nothing to write home about. Uh, it is what you would expect for a Euro game. Uh, yeah. Uh, da -da -da -da. Let's see. These are obviously somewhat different, uh, and you can tell that these look different as well. Uh, fine wool, fine cloth, start of round. Uh, start of round. So these are cards that you might be putting out or doing something with at the start of each round. I don't know. Uh, and these are numbered all at the very center. So that's interesting. Uh, these look like some sort of point cards. Maybe. I don't know. Next rank, Marquis, uh, Prince. Yeah. These are definitely, I, I assume these are just points printed on it and they serve some sort of a function, obviously. Um, and then we have four of these. So these are probably the reference cards in the individual play colors, so that's good. Uh, you can have one of these, and this hopefully gives you a good walkthrough of what you're doing on your turn. So play one action card, perform actions, and the actions can be movement action, card action, or bonus actions. And this looks like uh, uh, this piece that we've seen right here. This is, I assume, the player board, because we can see the image for this right here, and you're playing cards into this tableau, as it were. Nice. So that's pretty much it. Uh, card stock is decent, not too bad. Uh, it is, uh, I'm, I'm happy with that generally. There's no matte finish or anything, but uh, hopefully these are gonna, uh, these, these look like decent cards. So I'm not really that concerned about uh, the longevity uh, on these. But that's it for everything that comes in the box for Crown of Imara. Components uh, wise, standard Euro games, I'm uh, fairly okay with it. It's uh, not particularly exciting, but uh, hopefully the game is an exciting one. I've uh, definitely heard very good things about it. Seems to be a bit of a under, 
unknown, a bit of an unknown gem, as it were. People have played it, do speak very highly of it, but you don't really find a lot of people who have played it. So that's the distinction right there. But that's the unboxing for Crown of the Morrow. Hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, the video. And if you did, do give us a like and subscribe to our channel. And in the meanwhile, thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.